Hello everybody, uh, Peter Bigland here, bringing you a uh, update on certain things that I think you should be uh, made aware of. Uh, for most of you in the United Kingdom at the moment, you will be probably fed up to the back teeth of the electoral clown car that's touring around the country, uh, trying to persuade you to vote for either Labour or UKIP or the Conservatives or Clyde Cumru, whoever it is that they're, uh, they're banging the, the drum up currently. Now, one of the things I want to bring to people's attention is the actual nature of the ballot system itself. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm standing in front of these municipal buildings here because on election day, in four weeks' time, many of these buildings will be open for you to come and what's called cast your vote. Now, the problem with this situation is, do many people actually understand what the significance of actually going into that ballot box and putting the cross on the ballot paper signifies? So I'm going to refer to some notes today because it's reasonably complex and I don't think it's a topic that's been covered before. Um, so this is hopefully a first. It's entitled, Why You Should Refuse to Vote in the 2015 General Election. Uh, most people will say, oh, well, if you refuse to vote, then you obviously don't have a, uh, a right to any say in uh, a democratic society because everything is based or predicated on uh, a vote within a democracy. But as we all know, we don't have a democracy as such. We have something called an elected dictatorship. Once these criminal jackasses and hyenas are put into office, they pay no attention whatsoever to the wishes or desires or even what they've actually put into print in their manifestos. So it's a story that's gone on for time immemorial and the formula they use is surprisingly simple. Um, the formula is very, very simple and this is its efficacy. Uh, you, many of the voters think that parliamentarians are dumb and that you're the smart one. However, what the parliamentarians are doing really is just helping you along and allowing you to do all the work. And the two things then that come in what's called the con or the confidence trick are a, a two-pronged attack. One, most people can't believe that this con is so old and been going on for so long. And then the second part is they can't believe that so many people would have fallen for it in the past. And that gives a very, very strange psychological twist to all this because with those two points in, in mind, what it means is that you are the victim and the parliamentarian is your opponent. And the one thing that you are denying is the fact that if you start to question the opponent, it calls into doubt or it calls open to question either your intelligence, your perception, or should we say your prudence. And that's the last thing that most people want. So they tend to bury their heads in the sand, metaphorically speaking, and the reality of the situation is the clown car carries on, the lies spill out, the agendas never change, and you end up with a system of what's called oppo sayings. It's always the same hand in a different colored glove. Now, lest you doubt about whether you should vote or whether you shouldn't, there's a categorical reason that transcends all boundaries, all political parties, and all philosophical arguments, and that is the validity of an X on a piece of paper. Now, typically in former times, when there was uh, a great deal of illiteracy, or a great deal, should we say, of mental deficiency, maybe more than these days, or maybe there's more now, uh, in society, those who were deemed to be illiterate, incompetent, juvenile, lunatics, uh, or wards of the parish and couldn't read or write, were usually asked to make an X on a document for it to have any legal status. The one caveat with that was always, even today, if you sign a will and can't write, you're allowed to make an X mark. However, it must be witnessed by at least two people to be legally valid. Okay? So, what we have here is a setup whereby you are encouraged to go into a ballot station. There are uh, so many wards around the country, 9,500 or 9,600 wards. Now, what inhabits a ward? 
psychiatric patient, a lunatic, um, individuals who are in hospital, in emergency situation, a ward of the parish, a ward of the court. Does this not bring exactly home to the point that you are never ever listened to because the moment that you go into that ballot box and put an X onto the ballot paper, what it is signifying is that you are declaring and assuming and affirming that you are a mental incompetent, a lunatic or a juvenile that is not competent to make his own decisions and therefore will have those decisions made for you. And that, my friends, is the sole reason that the political machine never pays any attention to you and that they just carry on and regard you as children within the estate which they manage. You're in their house, the House of Commons, and they are the masters within that house. Um, so, just to round off, uh, referring to my notes here, the other thing that you should be aware of is a double up to the, the fact that the cross or the X mark is an invalidation of any rights that you might claim, not a confirmation of them, is something called chiasmus, C-H-I-A-S-M-U-S, -S, or the crisscross structure. And the crisscross structure can be found on, found on Vatican symbology. Um, and what it does is, in its classical application, chiasmus, or in Latin, chi ro, would have been used for structures that do not repeat the same words and phrases, but invert a sentence's grammatical structure or ideas. So that's further confirmation, if you need it, that coming up on the general election 2015, do not put a mark on a ballot paper apart from putting a reject on it. The putting of the cross on it gets you nowhere because the government, the white horse, or the hand within the glove takes no notice whatsoever. So, there's no argument about it. The actual uh, legality and the semantics and the grammatical significance of putting an X on a document confirms only one thing, that you are a, in a ward, in an electoral ward, and you're being administered to as a pauper or a pauper or a poor person within a parish that has been looked after by guardians. Okay, so that's Peter of England signing off here. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe.